Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity for Commander. Today we have our first gameplay video of 2023, so without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. My Tavesh is at Doom of Fools and Tarn of the Bloodsower Sacrifice deck, and give an opening hand of Deathrite Shaman, Soul Ring, Blood Artist, Mind Stone, Marsh Flats, a Mountain, and a Forest. Thomas is playing his Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp modular combo deck, keeping a starting hand of Build to Last, Red Elemental Blast, Hogbound Ravager, Scrap Welder, Cryptic Caves, Mishra's Factory, and a Plains. Jack is also playing a Sacrifice deck, with his being commanded by Zeatora the Incinerator. He keeps a starting hand made up of Deathrite Shaman, Krogsa, Titan of Death's Hunger, Ebon Death, Dracolich, Your Luck of Scorch Thrash, Lord of Extinction, Temple of Malady, and the Forest. And finally, Connor is playing his The Ur Dragon Dragon Tribal deck, and keeps a hand consisting of Farseek, Orb of Dragonkind, Teamer Ascendancy, Dragonlord Dramoka, Hellkite Corsa, Flooded Strand, and Wooded Foothills. I win the die roll and play a forest. Next, I cast Deathrite Shaman and pass to Thomas. Thomas plays Mishra's Factory and casts his commander, Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp. The Robo Insect enters with a plus one plus one counter and Thomas passes the turn. Jack plays a forest and casts Deathrite Shaman. Pretty sure I've seen that play somewhere before. Happy with his uninspired play, Jack ends his turn. Connor plays Wooded Foothills, pays one life, and sacrifices it. He searches his library for Zeatora's Proving Ground, puts the land into play tapped, and passes to Alex. I play a mountain, and exile the fetch land in Connor's graveyard to generate a green mana. I then use this to cast Soul Ring, which I tap along with both of my lands to cast one of my commanders, Tarna the Bloodsower. Pleased to have her out so early, I pass the turn. In his turn, Thomas plays a plains and casts Arcbound Javelinier. Electing not to attack, he ends his turn. Jack plays Temple of Malady, keeping the top card of his library where it is, and passes to Connor. Connor begins his turn by playing Spire Garden and then casts Farseek. He searches his library for Katria Triome, puts it onto the battlefield tapped, and passes. In my turn, I move straight to combat, attacking Jack with my commander. He declares no blocks, taking 2 damage, and I create 2 1 1 sapling tokens thanks to Tana's ability. In my second main phase, I play a fancy marsh flats and pay 1 life to sacrifice it. I search my library for overgrown tomb, paying 2 life to have it enter untapped, and cast my second commander, Tivash Sazat, Doom of Fools. I activate the Planeswalker's plus 1 ability, sacrificing a sapling to draw 2 cards, and End my turn. Thomas plays Cryptic Caves and casts a stunning Arcbound Ravager. Still unwilling to attack, he passes to Jack. Jack responds to this by exiling Alex's Marsh Flats and proceeds to his turn. Jack plays Bloodstained Mire and passes. Connor starts his turn by playing Flooded Strand and casts Teamer Ascendancy. With no further actions, he ends his turn. I play a Swamp and move to combat. Here I once again attack Jack with Tana, to which he declares no blocks, taking 2 damage. I create 2 saplings where my commander deals damage, and move to my second main phase. Here I sacrifice a sapling to Tivash Sizat's plus 1 ability, drawing 2 cards, and cast Washitora, Nekora Queen. Moving to my end step, I discard down to 7, and pass to Thomas. Thomas casts Scrap Trawler, and passes. Jack once again responds by exiling the land in Alex's graveyard, adding a black to his mana pool, and pays one life to sacrifice his fetch land. He searches his library for a swamp, puts the land onto the battlefield, and taps out to flash in Ebon Death Draco Lich. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Still in Thomas's end step, Connor pays one life and sacrifices Flooded Strand, searching his library for Hallowed Fountain. He has the land ended tapped, and with no further interruptions, Jack proceeds to his turn. Jack exiles the fetch land in his graveyard with Deathrite Shaman, using the mana produced to help cast Yorlock of Scorch Thrash. Next, he plays Takanuma Abandoned Mire as his land for turn, and passes. In his turn, Connor casts Solemn Simulacrum, 
putting a mountain onto the battlefield from his library. Wait, that's not a dragon. Out of mana, he ends his turn. I begin my turn by moving straight to combat, attacking Thomas with my cat dragon. Unable to block, Thomas takes 5 damage and chooses to sacrifice his commander to Washitoro's ability. He moves the plus one plus one counter from Sabaz onto his javelinier, and I move to my post combat main phase. Here, I cast Gonti, Lord of Luxury, and look at the top four cards of Jack's library with their ETB. I exile one of these cards for later use, play a very sad Cabal Coffers, and cast Mindstone. Still not finished, I exile a Fetchland from Connor's Graveyard with my Shaman, and use the Generated Mana to cast Ignoble Hierarch. Pretty pleased with how my board is now looking, I pass to Thomas. Thomas plays Ancient Den, and Affinity Dog Mulan takes the opportunity to check on how the game is going. I always knew she'd be a Jun player. Thomas then recasts his commander, and passes. Jack starts his turn by moving straight to combat, attacking Connor with your luck. Connor blocks the Vaishno with his sad robot, drawing a card when they die, and Jack proceeds to his post-combat main phase. Here he plays a forest and uses Yorlok's ability to generate each of us 3 mana. Not yet finished, he casts Greater Good and uses his remaining floating mana to cast Croxer Titan of Death's Hunger. Jack immediately sacrificed the giant to Greater Good, avoiding the creature's own sacrifice trigger, and the rest of the table each discard a non-land card. Jack then draws 6, discards 3, and casts Golter Primal Hunger for Two mana. Pretty darn pleased with his plays, Jack moves to his end step, and Thomas responds by activating his Mishra Factory's one mana ability three times. This uses up the floating mana that Yorlok gifted him, and I respond to this by using the mana I was given to cast the Riveter's Charm that Gonti stole from Jack. Both extremely resourceful moves. I use the charm to exile the top three cards of my library for later use, and unable to get rid of his floating mana, Connor loses 3 life. With no further actions to resolve, Jack ends his turn. In his turn, Connor plays a plains and casts Orb of Dragonkind. Next he uses his remaining mana to cast Hellkite Corsa, drawing a card from his team ascendancy. The Corsa's ETB then resolves, with the Ur Dragon being put onto the battlefield in this way. Ho oh, ho, boy. Connor draws another card from his Ascendancy, and then moves to combat. Here he attacks Tevesh Tazatz with his commander, and Alex with his Hellkite, drawing two cards with the Ur Dragon's ability. Connor puts Brainstealer Dragon into play, drawing a card from his enchantment, and damage then occurs. The Planeswalker is decimated, Alex takes 6, and Connor moves to his end step. Here he exiles the top card of each other player's libraries thanks to his brainy boy, returns the Ur Dragon to his command zone, and passes to Alex. I play the root-bound Krag that I exiled with Ruiter's Charm, and then cast the exiled Assassin's Trophy. I destroy Brainstealer Dragon in this way, and Connor puts a very pretty island onto the battlefield as a form of compensation for his loss. Moving to combat, I attack Connor with Tana and Washitora, and Jack with Gonti. In response to this, Thomas taps his Arc-bound Javelinier, removing both plus one plus one counters from it to deal two damage to my commander. The druid is destroyed, leaving me more than a little bit annoyed, and Jack blocks the Aetherborn with Ebon Death. Gondi and the Dracolich are destroyed, and Connor takes five damage. The Kitty Queen's ability triggers, forcing Connor to sacrifice his Hellkite, and I move to my second main phase. Here, I cast Victimize, sacrificing a Sapraling to return Gonti and Noxious Gearhulk from my graveyard to the battlefield. I target Galter with my Gearhulk's ability, and Jack responds by sacrificing the Elder Dinosaur to greater good. He draws a whopping 12 cards, discards 3, and my Construct's ability fizzles without a target. Next, I exile one of the top 4 cards of Jack's library with Gonti's ability, and with nothing more to do, pass the turn. Thomas casts Mere Retriever, and ends his turn. Jack begins his turn by playing Smouldering Marsh, and adds 3 mana to each of our pools with Yorlock. He then exiles a land from his own graveyard with Death Deathrite Shaman, and then casts Hamlet back Goliath. Still not finished, Jack casts an Ignoble Hierarch of his own, and puts 0 plus 1 plus 1 counters on his giant when it enters. 
Such an anticlimax. With one manner open, Jack passes to Connor, to which Thomas responds by animating his workshop three times. I use my floating manner to help cast Stinging Study. I draw five cards, lose five life, and Connor loses three life before proceeding to his turn. Connor plays the command tower that brings a Dragon exiled from Jack's library and casts Garrox Uprising. Next he casts Terror of the Peak, drawing a card from Team of Ascendancy and the second card from his Uprising. Jack puts 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on his Goliath and Connor uses his remaining mana to foretell a card, exiling it for later use. With nothing else to do, Connor passes and Alex responds by exiling Hellkite Corsa from Connor's graveyard with Deathrite Shaman. He gains 2 life and then proceeds to his turn. In my turn, I play a mountain and then move to combat. Here I attack Jack with my cat dragon and unable to block the flyer, he takes 5 damage. Jack sacrifices his death right shaman to Washi Tora's ability and I move to my second main phase. Here I cast Gyom, Master Chef, and Jack puts 5 more counters on his giant. That thing is getting really big really quickly. Not yet finished, I cast Blood Artist, putting another counter on Hamletback Goliath, and move to my end step. Here, Gyum creates two food tokens. I discard down to seven before ending my turn. Thomas starts his turn by casting a very shiny Bass Riquette, a planeswalker I had completely forgot even existed. <laughs> Burn. Thomas activates his plus one ability, putting a plus one plus one counter on Arcbound Javlinia, and passes to Jack. Alex responds to this by exiling the Ebon Death in Jack's graveyard with his shaman, getting to life before Jack moves to his turn. Jack plays a mountain and creates three token copies of the Rakshasa Debaser in his graveyard using their Encore ability. He puts 18 plus one plus one counters on Hamletback Goliath when the kitty cats enter the battlefield and then moves to combat. Thomas once again responds to this by animating Mishra's factory three times and Connor and I both lose three life thanks to the mana generated by Yorlok's ability. Jack then attacks each of us with a debaser, and Connor with his swole giant. He puts the brain stealer dragon in Connor's graveyard onto the battlefield under his control with his Rakshasa's attack trigger, but gets nothing from Thomas or myself due to us having no creatures in our graveyards. Now that's a shame. Jack puts another six plus one plus one counters on his giant, and not wanting to die, Connor blocks the attacking Goliath with Terror of the Peaks. I block the cat coming at me with Ignoble Hierarch, and Connor and Thomas both take 6 damage from unblocked Rakshasas. I drain Jack for 1 with Blood Artists when my goblin dies, and Jack proceeds to his second main phase. Here he sacrifices one of his debases to greater good, drawing 6 and discarding 3, and I drain Jack for another 1 life. Not wishing to deck himself out, Jack chooses not to sacrifice his remaining two tokens to his enchantment, and instead sacrifices them in his end step. I drain Jack for another two life, and Jack exiles the top cards of Thomas, Connor, and my libraries before passing the turn. Connor plays Mana Confluence as his land for turn, and pays one life to use it. He activates Orb of Dragonkind's second ability, looking at the top 7 cards of his library and putting Rith Liberated Primeval into his hand. Connor and Alex then make a deal to try and take Jack out of the game this turn, which Alex initiates by activating Guillaume's ability. He sacrifices a food to make Brainstealer Dragon indestructible, but more importantly taps him, and Connor casts the Haunting Voyage that he foretold last turn. He chooses dragons, returning Terror of the Peaks and Dragon Lord Jamoka to the battlefield, and deals Jack 5 damage with the Terror's ability. Next, Connor draws 4 cards from the combined effects of Team of Ascendancy and Garrick's Uprising, and Jack puts 10 more counters on his giants. He'll be running out of space to put those D6s soon. Moving to combat, Connor attacks Jack with both of his creatures, dealing him 10 damage. Connor gains 5 thanks to Jamoka's lifelink, and discards down to 7 before ending his turn. I begin my turn by casting a Whip of Erebos, and then move to combat. As promised, I attack Jack with all my creatures except for Deathrite Shaman and Blood Artist, and Jack responds by casting Rushed Rebirth. He targets Brainsteel Dragon with the instant, then sacrifices the Undead Dragon to greater good. I drain Jack for one with my artist, and Jack searches the library for Disciple of Bolas, 
putting two plus one plus one counters on Hamlet back Goliath as they enter the battlefield. Still prior to damage, Jack sacrifices his now 52, 52 giant, gaining 52 life and drawing 52 cards. What a creative way of keeping himself in the game. Well, it would be if Jack didn't only have one card left in his library and still had to resolve the greater good trigger that was already on the stack. Ah, I see. I once again drain Jack for one with Blood Artist, and Jack is unable to draw the six cards that Greater Good requires him to, knocking him out of the game. As a result of Jack no longer existing, my creatures don't deal any damage, meaning that I don't gain any life from their lifelink. Brutal. Absolutely livid. I move to my post-combat main phase, where I cast Shriekmore for their evoke cost. The elemental is immediately sacrificed, and I use their ETB to destroy Connor's Terror of the Peaks, ending our alliance with a swift act of violence. I drain Connor for two, given that two creatures died, and pass to Thomas. Thomas plays Sequestered Stash and taps out to cast Orcbound Bruiser. Next, he activates Basri's plus one ability, putting another plus one plus one counter on his Javelinier, and passes. Connor starts his turn by taking one damage from his mana confluence in order to cast Majestic Genesis. He reveals top nine cards as library, putting Zendikar Resurgent, Command Tower, Earthquake Dragon, Balefire Dragon, Tiamat, Miari's Wake, Lathless Dragon Queen, and Kindred Discovery into play, and draws 12 cards thanks to the combined effects of Timur Ascendancy, Garrick's Uprising, and Kindred Discovery. But that's not all. Lathless creates four 5-5 five, five dragon tokens with flying, drawing Connor another 12 cards in the process. Now that was a huge amount of value for only 8 mana. Finally finished resolving effects, Connor moves to combat, and I respond by sacrificing my final food token to tap down his earthquake dragon. Connor then attacks me with all of his dragons except for two of his tokens, which he keeps back as blockers in case something goes wrong. He then draws six more cards as a result of his discovery, and I exile the Terror of the Peaks from Connor's graveyard with my Shaman before taking more than lethal damage from his Thunder of Dragons. Connor gains six life from Dragon Lord Dremoka's lifelink, discards down to seven, and with only one opponent remaining, ends his turn. Thomas casts Orcbound Crusher, and with the Juggernaut on the stack, Connor casts Teferi's Protection, saving himself from whatever crazy infinite combo shenanigans Thomas had planned. With no way of surviving an attack from Connor, Thomas concedes the game to the Lord of Dragons. Well, that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed Tom almost stealing victory from Connor. I'd like to take this opportunity to give a huge thank you to each and every one of our incredible patrons, without whom we'd be unable to continue making content such as this. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra to buy your cards through these, but it really helps out the channel. Also, be sure to check out our promo code below to get 10% off enhanced gaming products. Our review for this carry case will come out soon, so keep an eye out for it. And finally, don't forget that you can help to support us in four quick and easy ways. Liking this video, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and leaving us a comment, I read every one. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!